Happy New, New Year. Year. Welcome to 2021. God has brought us safely over the troublesome waters of 2020. And now we're looking for safe harbor and through the mercies of God, we will succeed. And so we are thankful for his marvelous blessings. It is great, as David said, to be in the land of the living. And so I just want to welcome each and every one of you. In behalf of uh, Pastor David Kuke, uh, the Elders Board, we just want to say welcome to this new year of blessings, a year when we can reconnect and recommit ourselves to the great God who loves us with an everlasting love. And so we are thankful for you who are, have joined us in the year 20 over our internet stream. We thank you for your support. We pray that you will continue to support us, and we want this to be a place every Sabbath or for Saturday morning or afternoon where you can come and worship. So if you have a friend, and I know many of you do, you all have friends, invite them to tune in and join us and come and we can worship together. In way of announcement, we'd like to let you know that uh, for board members, there will be a board meeting this evening at 6 o'clock on our regular uh, Zoom stream, so you know who that is. Uh, and so we're asking that tune in at 6 o'clock. Also, our AY leader wants you to know that there will be a AYS uh, Zoom uh, meeting this evening and the, at 4.30 p.m. And this will be presented by the young, many of our young people, especially those who are a part of the Youth on Fire, that they will come and share with you their uh, experiences as they have gone around uh, ministering and trying to encourage the youth to get connected with God. So they are on fire. And we want you to come so that you can also be on fire and do great and wonderful things in the year 2021. So this is at 4.30 p.m. today via Zoom. The Zoom ID will be 756-909-2397. And the password, I guess, is BLTSDA. All right, I'll repeat that again, 756-909-2397. The password is B-L-T-S-D-A. You don't want to miss it. And if you're young, and especially if you're young at heart, tune in. Come and join that you will get a blessing. As we worship today. 2020 is behind us. Don't hold on to the old. Start opening up your hearts and your minds that you can receive the new blessings. It is said, it is of the Lord's mercies that we have not been consumed. His compassions fail not. God gives out a new supply each and every morning. And so we're just asking you to prepare your hearts each and every day. This is a wonderful day. Let us plan even now to prepare a new vision. For we have greater things yet to come. And we will experience this when we are connected with the one who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever ask or think. And so we just want to welcome you into 2021 and stay connected with God.
Good morning again, Beacon Light. Can we stand at this time for our call to worship? Our call to worship comes from Psalms 145. And David says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. You know, it is indeed a happy new year when we, like David, can, in spite of everything we've gone through in 2020, um, can recognize and declare that God is great and greatly to be praised. This year, let us be an instrument of service to him. But let us recognize that God is not just looking for people with the greatest abilities, but those with the greatest availability. This is our call to worship. Congregation may be seated. Nation and tongue 
from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are, for who you are, for who you are, you are Holy, holy, 
John, one of Jesus' disciples, wrote to tell people about who Jesus is. John wrote that the word Jesus existed in the beginning, before the world even began. The word has always existed with God, and the word has always existed as God. He was with God in the beginning. When God spoke at creation, all things were created through his word. Not one thing was created apart from him. The word brought life into the world and light for all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness could not hide it. God sent a man named John the Baptist to be a witness to the light. John was not the light, but he came to tell people about the light so they might believe. The true light was coming into the world to give light to everyone. When Jesus came into the world, people did not recognize him. His own people did not accept him, but this is good news. To everyone who did accept him, he gave them the right to be a part of God's family, to be children of God. The word became a human and lived among us. People saw his glory, the glory of the one and only son of God. He was full of grace and truth, John the Baptist told people that even though Jesus came into the world after him, Jesus is greater because he existed before John. People received blessings from Jesus, grace upon grace. Long ago, God gave people the law through Moses, but now he has given us grace and truth through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but Jesus, God's one and only son, has shown us what God is like. The birth of Jesus was good news. Jesus was no ordinary baby. He was God's son, sent to earth from heaven. Jesus came into the world as a human to bring us life. He brought light into darkness and showed us what God is like. Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture, re morning, scripture reading this morning will be taken from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Let us stand for our scripture reading. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was, not, was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. 
he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born and not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Here readeth the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Good afternoon, church. Praise the Lord. It's prayer time. And as I pray aloud, I'm going to ask that you will pray silently. Just in case I don't include something that you want the Lord to hear today. But we're going to pray. And we're going to thank the Lord for his blessings. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Father God, first and foremost, Lord, thank you for ushering us into 2021. Lord, we have been through a lot in 2020. There was civil unrest, Lord, and there was racial tensions. We had problems with our government. Satan has reared his ugly head, Lord, attacking us. But Lord, through it all, no matter how bad things got, Lord, you saw us through. You kept your word as you always do. You take care of your own, Lord. There's nothing too hard for you, Lord. And we just want to say thank you for your marvelous, wonderful blessings upon each and every one of us, all of our families. And Lord, I pray, I know that some of us have made New Year's resolutions. We want to achieve certain things in 2021. We want to we want to aspire to different heights. I pray, Lord God, that whatever we set our minds to do, I pray that first and foremost, it will be that we draw closer to you in 2021. Help us, Lord, not to lean unto our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge you and you will direct our path. That's what we want, Lord, and that's what we need. Because there's no one else that's able to keep us from falling, Lord, but you. There's no one else, Lord, that can present us faultless before your throne of grace but you. There's no one else, Lord, that can provide for us and that cares for us and that loves more of us than you, Lord. And so I pray, Father God, in Jesus' wonderful, glorious name that we keep you in the forefront of our minds and at the top of our list of things to do and to accomplish. We want to be saved in your kingdom when you come, Lord. And so we pray that your Holy Spirit will come and rest and rule and abide in each and every family that we might draw closer to you. Forgive us for our sins, Father. 
Sometimes the things that we don't want to do, we find ourselves doing. We know that we're fighting against a foe that's greater than us. Help us to remember that you are greater than he. And all we have to do is call on your precious name and have faith. And we can be overcomers. And help us to be thankful. Bless the speaker of the hour, Lord. He has dug deep into your storehouse of knowledge. And he has a word for us, Lord. And I pray that as he come before us that we will see you clearer, Lord as a result of what he brings. We will love you dearer, Lord, and we will follow you nearer in Jesus' precious name. Before I close, Lord, thank you for Calvary. Thank you for making it possible that we could be in glory with you again, to live eternally with our God. And so we thank you for that. And on that great getting up morning, Lord, when you break through the clouds of glory to collect your own from the four corners of this earth, I pray that each and every one of us here at Beacon Light Tabernacle, each and every one of us, Lord, that are online, that are listening, I pray that we will all be found faithful in Jesus' wonderful name. Let the church say, amen, amen. How are we doing out there today? I just wanted to personally say Happy New Year to every last one of you. And may God bless you abundantly upon abundantly upon abundantly. Blessings upon blessings through the whole year of 2021. Come on. Let's claim that right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out, and right now I know you're able, and my God, come through again, you can do You never lost the battle. No, you never lost the battle. Lost a battle. He's always fought my 
our battle and win. Hallelujah. Well, everything's possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. A new wind is blowing right now. Breaking our heart of stone, taking over like it's Jericho. And my walls, they're all crashing down. And right now, I know you're able. And my God, come through again. You can do all Yes, he will. Only do it. You can do all things, but when yes, you never lost the battle, no, you never lost the battle. Amen. God has never lost a battle. And He never will. Like they say in the streets, you can take that to the bank. What a mighty God we serve. A God that loves us and cares for us in such a magnificent manner. The one who invites us to come and cast our cares upon him for he cares for us. He's the only one that can boast I've never lost a battle. 
even when his great created being went against him and the host of heaven came against him, he won the battle. And he's winning the battle in our lives each and every day. And no matter what you are going through, he can win the battle for you. It's been a long time since I've uh, had to stand up here and speak. This seems strange to me. But sometimes God calls us out of our place of ease for he desires to save us and sometimes we become so comfortable that we lose our perspective on who he is we become complacent and think it's all about us. And so from time to time, God has to challenge us and give us a new vision. That's what it's all about. As we begin 2021, creating a new vision for scripture tells us without vision we perish we cannot look anymore at 2020 it's gone anything that will be spoken of 2020 or written about 2020 is history. But what would be written about you for 2021? Words. Light. Life. Marion Webster Dictionary defines words as a speech sound or a series of speech sounds that symbolizes and communicates a meaning, usually without divisible, being divisible into smaller parts or smaller units and can be independent of itself. For instance, you cannot break down the word go, but it's understood. You can't break down the word come, but it's understood. And so God invites us to come unto him. And once we have come unto him, he invites us then to go and be a service to others. And so in this year, 2021, we're going to set the vision of coming unto God so that we can go and be visionaries showing people the pathway lifting up Jesus that he will draw all men unto him for soon and very soon Jesus will come 
All we have to do is look all around us. The signs of the time are dictating the realities of Jesus' imminent return. We have been given warning that in the last days, perilous times should come. But God has not left us comfortless. He has sent his word. And his word has come that it may shed upon us light and give us light. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, you are God of all. And so as we gathered here today, we've gathered that we may receive from you your precious word. That you will shed light upon us and give us life eternal. Bless us now, the words of our mouths and the meditation of my heart, O oh God, will be acceptable in your sight. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want you to join with me. We're going to invite God to come in. Come into my heart. Come into my heart, you at home. It's not hard. It's a song that I'm quite sure that you have sung before. Join on in. This is worship time. We're just going to invite you to come to worship. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today. Just raise that up for me, please. And we'll sing that again. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. What a prayer. Inviting God into our hearts. If there's anyone that you want to speak words into your life, it has to be God. Because words are a powerful tool. Words can either build or words can destroy. But God has a destiny for us and he is always picking us up. For God says he moves us from glory to glory. He is always shedding upon us his love. And his love was manifested in such a manner that he gave humanity the greatest gift that we can have. And that was his precious son. And so John, in writing about this gift, he says, in the beginning, 
was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Think about that for a second. The Word. Jesus, the Word. Just think, what comes to mind when you even say the name Jesus? I'm quite sure that no bad thoughts come to mind. You think of what? Good things. You think of eternal things. For Jesus says that, I have come that you might have what? Life. And have it more abundantly. Scripture reminds us that we have to be very mindful of the words that we speak. For it says that many of us are trapped by the words of our mouth. We are ensnared, Solomon says, by the words of our mouth. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They say, Proverbs goes on to say, they are sharpened. They sharpen their tongues like sword and aim cruel words like deadly arrows. Once it is spoken, you can't take it back. How many of us feel trapped by the words that were spoken to us? Words that were damaging to our spirit. Words that were uttered when we were young that we are still holding on to even today. Words that brought about discouragement instead of encouragement. Words that have prevented us from moving forward. Words are powerful too. James Allen, a noted philosophical writer back in 1903, wrote a little booklet that's called As a Man Think It. I would recommend if you ever had a chance, it's online, just type in James Allen as a man think it. It's only 33 pages. But it is an aphorism based on the text that is found in Proverbs 23, for as a man think it in his heart, so is he. Our thoughts are based on words that either will encourage us or destroy us. And so we need to understand the words that we speak into our spirit. It is often said, if you think you can't, you're right. But God comes up wrong and says, for you can do what? All things who? Through Christ who strengthens you. Let this mind be in, that was also in Christ Jesus. Here is the deal. God always starts with the end in mind. Look at God's words to you and I. It is not my wish that any man should 
perish, but that all men should come to repentance. And so if that's God's end, that we should what? Not perish, but that we should come to repentance, God now sets out to ensure that it takes place. Let's look what he says in Isaiah 55. So my word that comes out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but, this is the good part, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Hallelujah. God is telling you and I, it's his desire, his wish, that we shall not perish. And I have sent my word, and my word will not return unto me void. It shall accomplish the task for which I have sent it. No wonder God said to Joshua, let not this book of the law depart from your mouth, but meditate upon it, what? Day and night, then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. When you think of good success, what comes to mind? When you think of good success based on what God's plan is for your life, good success is eternal life. Just look at it. God tells us, I will fulfill my promises. Sister Cloney just reminded us, God never fails. He will fulfill his promises. He says that in, uh, I am long suffering. This is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, but is long suffering to us, not wishing that any man should perish, but that all men should come to repentance. God says, I will fulfill my promise. I am long-suffering. I'm waiting for you to get it right. What is he waiting for? So that you and I will come to repentance because he desires that none of us should perish. God says, my words are not idle words, not, here, not hot air. They will not return unto me void. My words will accomplish what I please. My word will prosper in the thing for which I have sent it. That should bring joy to our heart. We have a God that will not fail. We have a God that wants the best for us. And the best is yet to come. And so how did God fulfill, start out fulfilling his plan and his purpose? With love, God sent his son. I call John 3, 6, 16, the center of the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Ever lasting life. Folks, 
my brothers, my sisters, you listening in via the internet, God wants to give you eternal life. And he gave his all that he may accomplish, accomplish this task. He gave his son who gave his life so that we might have life. Think about that. We couldn't have gotten it any better. And so Jesus came. As scripture at the next verse in John chapter 3 verse 17 it says for God sent not his son into the world to what? Condemn. God doesn't bring condemnation. He wants to give us life. He sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so Jesus, we sing the song, the light of the world, Hark the herald angels sing, Jesus, the light of the world. Glory to the newborn king, Jesus, the light of the world. Are you letting Jesus shine his light in your heart? As you now beginning this your genesis of a new year. Looking for new experiences. Do you dare begin it without Jesus, the light of the world? What words will you speak this year? Will you begin to Get into the scripture as David says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not, what? Sin against you. How would a young man cleanse his way? By what? Getting into the word of God. The enemy of our soul wants to steal this word from you. God has given us a warning. Know ye not that in the last days a famine should come upon the land. Not a famine for food, but a famine for what? The word of God. The enemy have us so busy, so wrapped up that we don't have time for this anymore. You walk down the street. Oh, I don't even have it with me. I took it out. Yeah, see people? People even driving. On this little cell phone. Have more time for cell phone and YouTube and Facebook and all the other stuff and say, I don't have time to study the Word of God. And those things don't give you life. Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. But they are they which testify of me. How would you know that Jesus saves? Unless you have studied the salvific work of God. If you don't know that God wants to give you eternal life, how would you know how to find it? So this year, I just want to encourage you, take some time 
to get into the word. The word of God is powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword. It will cut what ails you. Remember, God doesn't want to destroy you. Like he says, I'm not out that any man should perish. Or the word of God, the cutting that the word of God does is not to destroy, but to build up, to bring about correction, instruction in ways of righteousness. That's the word. Here's a text. We often read it. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1 to 3, it says, And God, in the beginning, what? God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And God spake, God said, Let there be, and there was light. What produced the light? The word. God spoke and light came into existence. Think about it. Was it the sun? Was it the moon? It, God then spoke to him self. And the presence of God came upon the nothingness that was there. That's what God wants to do with you and I today. Impress himself upon the nothingness, the darkness where we find ourselves and shed the light of salvation. Remember the young man? We call him the prodigal son. He went off into a far land, righteously living, until he found himself in a dark place. And the scripture says, and he came to his did he come to his senses or was it the presence of God? The light of Jesus Christ came into his mind and he says, I will return to my father's house. God doesn't matter where he, how dark the darkness. He doesn't even care about where you are. Just as long as you are open to light. For light will separate darkness. And so he got up and he returned unto his God's words did not return to him. It accomplished what God wanted it to accomplish. And this young man went and got up and went to his father's house. This is the message of God's promised revelation. His message is truthful. His message is perfect in righteousness. And in him, there is no darkness at all. No wickedness. No imperfection. And God, like that father, is looking. Scripture says he never slumbers nor sleep. 
But his eyes are always roaming to and fro upon the earth, looking out for his children. For the word says that God wants all men to come to repentance. God is still saying, let there be light. Do you hear it? He's speaking to himself so that he can impress upon you his love. He's saying, I'm going down. And I am becoming what? Flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And, it saw, and this Word became and dwelt among us, that I would shed forth my light. But isn't it ironic that in the middle of those verses it says, but men rather darkness more than light. When are we going to turn away and let the light of Christ's love shine upon us? And so as you are making your plans for 20 21. Let it not be just for 2021, but let it be a plan for eternity. Let it be an eternal plan. Because if you were to read 2 Peter chapter 3, it says, For this earth shall melt with fervent heat. So all that you accomplish down here will be meaningless. What did it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? What would you give in exchange for it? The only thing that we can offer God is self. He has given you far more. John chapter 17, verse 3 says, And this is life eternal. That they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Life eternal starts by knowing God. Life eternal is appreciating the sacrifice of Jesus. giving up the glories of heaven and taking on the form of humanity, willing to suffer on a cross, nails nailed into his palms and into his feet. Why? So that we might have Life eternal. So I just want to encourage you. God wants to give each and every one eternal life. It's not his wish that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I don't know where you are. What darkness. It's all around you. It doesn't matter. I can't save you. The church can't save you. But there's one that can. 
And he says, if you would be like that prodigal son and let my glory shine upon you. Remove the darkness and give you the light. And starting to make your way back home, I will be there with open arms. Not arms of condemnation, but arms of love. I will give you a new name, a new name in glory. And it's mine. It can be yours. He will clothe us with the clothes, the robe of what? Righteousness. If we but surrender. If we but give him our heart. He says, my son, my daughter, give me your heart. For those who receive Christ, he gave them power to become what? Sons and daughters of God. What a relationship. And this is not like adoption. This is the real thing. He didn't say, I will make you like a son. <laughs> I will make you like a daughter. If you receive me, you will be my son. You will be my daughter. Because I love you with an everlasting love. The question we need to ask ourselves. Are we ready for Jesus to come? The theme of the Bible is Jesus. I'm going to ask my brothers to come on up. And how he died to save men. The plan of salvation assures us Jesus is coming again. So don't cling to this world and its treasures. For all of this will pass away. Give him your life without measure. He's calling you today. Do you hear his words? I don't know what kind of vice you may find yourselves in. For some of you, it might have been a secret. Some are dealing with some strange issues. Alcoholism, substance abuse, pornography, lying. It doesn't matter with God. God just says, come. Let him in. And when he comes in, he says he will make us into a new creation. Old things will, and behold, all things become new. Let 2021 be your year of letting the word of God shine its light upon you that you will receive eternal life.
coming again, coming again, Jesus is coming. The theme of the Bible is Jesus, and how he died, to and save how he died, the plan of salvation assures us. He's coming back again. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you faithful in all that you do? Oh, 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 oh. in you. So don't cling to this world and its treasure. This earth will soon pass this away. This earth will soon pass oh, away. Give him your love without measure. He's calling you today. Are you Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? Only you could answer that question. You at home. Are you ready for Jesus to come? If you're not ready, you have to be honest with yourself. We all do. God is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, not wanting any man to perish, but that all should come to repentance. Are you ready for Jesus to come? For those in the congregation, let's just stand at home. Gather the family around. Let us pray that we will be ready. For he that shall come will come and will not tarry. 
eternal God and our Father. We're thankful that you have been long-suffering. We have not been consumed because your compassions failed not. We have gotten a new supply of grace even today. You want the best for us. Eternal life. And so God, we just pray and even now that you will shine your light of your presence upon us. Clarify in our hearts and our minds your desire to give us eternal life. That we will wake up and return home. Thank you, Father, for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for the challenges of life. That we will be prepared. And on that great day, we will hear the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. This we pray in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Amen. God be with you. Thank you for coming and being with us. Amen. Amen. And we will continue our service as part of offertory before uh, the folks in the congregation leave. We want to give you an opportunity to serve God in the manner that he has asked us to be obedient in our tithes and offerings. As our customary is, we will show a video clip, and then I will show you the ways of giving. One day, Martha was at church, and the pastor was conducting a renewal of vow ceremony. He used the opportunity to encourage the members to be faithful, not only to their spouses and to keep the Sabbath, but to also do... be loyal in other areas of their lives, such as returning their tithe and percentage-based offerings. Martha was really uncomfortable when the pastor said something about making a vow to return a fixed percentage of their income as offerings. So she asked Jackie, who gave her Bible studies. Why should I make a vow about offerings? Can't I just give as my heart tells me to? Or when I see that there is a project worthy to be supported? Well, do you truly think your heart can be trusted? And before you respond, do you remember what Jeremiah 17.9 says about our hearts? I don't. It says that our heart heart is deceitful, above all things, and desperately wicked. We cannot just trust in our feelings or impulses to do what is right, you know? I see. Ellen White also tells us something similar. Really? What exactly does she say? She says that if we are controlled by impulse or mere human sympathy, we may stop giving if our efforts are repaid with ingratitude, for example. That is why Christians should act from a fixed principle, following the Savior's example of self-denial and self-sacrifice. Makes sense. You know, vows or promises taken in God's presence are like doors that we decide to open with our minds, by which the Holy Spirit will enter and replace the originally selfish heart by another, a purified one, willing to give from a fixed principle, according to His pattern, it is not the vow itself that makes us give, but his miracle in our heart. It is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. I believe I must pray about this then. This would be a very good idea. As you return your tithe and give your promise, invite the Holy Spirit to replace your selfish heart of stone with a humble heart that is willing to act according to God's plan. May we put our desires last and God first. Amen. And our ways of giving 
our AdventistGiving.org and FaithLife.com. Please look for Beacon Light Tabernacle in Wappinger Falls, New York. And for those in the congregation, we do have a, a receptacle here that you can drop your offerings and your tithe, and it will be counted uh, for our new year 2021. God's blessings to you. Let me just say a word of prayer over the offering. Kind, loving Father, we thank you so much for your love, your mercy, and your grace that you saw fit to see us through 2021. And as we have heard this morning, we need to be ready for your soon coming. So help us understand how important it is for us to be obedient to you in every aspect, including this part of worship and tithes and offering. We thank you for your love and your care, and we ask you to grant that to us throughout 2021. This I pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Let us close out in prayer. Father God, <clears throat> we are thankful for this worship experience. We pray, O oh God, that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.